Hello, my name is Vispianko. In this video, we will have a look at a loop antenna, a homemade one. I would say rather interesting in the design. Uh, usually, those things are uh, made with a thin wire and then electrical amplifier. Uh, in this case, we have a thicker stranded wire and a uh, a bit a bigger size so we don't need another electrical source for amplifying. Now the idea for that design here came from Germany and uh, I'm gonna link to the video from uh, Wanderlinse is his channel his name is Richie Schley. He also has a website with a lot of, of uh, nice information about radios and 3D printing and other stuff. So credit to him. He came up with that design, made a, a video mainly in German and uh, I did think I gonna create my own version of it. Now the idea for this antenna is uh, was for him uh, that he don't have any good connection between his living room and the attic. Uh, he rents a place as usual in Germany and uh, in the winter time that door, the connecting door needs to be closed because uh, of the heating problem. And uh, so he wanted to create an antenna, basically a winter antenna or an antenna for the colder times that he can set up relatively easy inside his room uh, that is not uh, absolute big but uh, can use the space what he has and he came up with uh, that design tested it out made a couple videos about it uh, testing it and all that and uh, so far it works great so for me the situation is a bit different uh, i have my own property i can hang up antennas how i want that is not the problem but we have uh, often a bit of hard weather here in north georgia in the jungle and the uh, wind and storm so I would like to have multiple antennas and one of them or minimum one of them uh, as storm proof as possible so I did think that is a great idea uh, also since it doesn't use any spare additional electricity for the amplifier uh, that helps also so we don't need a uh, uh, battery pack or something for the amplifier we just have to power the radios and that that's it so that did appeal to me too now what he did is hanging the cable just inside his room in a approximately uh, circle like we have it here uh, for me I needed to have a bit of a more durable setup so I'm not gonna hang it just on the wall in this case uh, on the outside wall uh, I just uh, put it in PVC pipe that I did bend as best as I could uh, you see the brown spots uh, there where we had to bend it and because it's flat on the ground it's not 100% uh, round like that once I hang it on the wall we can uh, bend it and shape it a bit and uh, screw it better on the wall so it's a bit more round uh, you just need to do it as round as possible, it doesn't need to be perfect and uh, that works uh, really well. So two pieces of uh, half, was it half, uh, yes, half inch uh, PVC pipe uh, that got connected on top there because the length of the cable uh, did not work out with one piece of the PVC pipe you simply connect it in the middle and then uh, saw it off at the end what is uh, too much so basically it starts with the cable so we see there the cable just connected uh, you can uh, use a basic electric cable, a multi-strand cable in USA, that's a 6A VG and the length is 23.5 foot in uh, Germany or in Europe it's a 16 uh, millimeter, uh, quadrat millimeter cable 
and that is five meters long. Uh, you don't need to solder it if you uh, can't solder, so that is not the problem. But of course, if you can solder, it's uh, easier. You can use a, a regular uh, gator clamp to clamp it on. I just twisted it in for test there on that side. On this side here, it's already soldered and shrink wrap, shrink tube uh, over it. So you need to do that. And uh, then we have the connector. We simply used a wire uh, going to that part here. Uh, that clamps into the sides through uh, holes. The name of that item is BNC male to 4 mm twin binding post in English. It's basically that part here all the way to here and the adapter here, the adapter part is separately. It depends what kind of cable you're gonna, gonna use then. And then we have further on the coax cable. Uh, depending on how long you, you need it, the coax cable is a RG. 58 and the connectors that I got were UHF male on both sides so you need the adapter the correct adapter to connect from this part to that part it depends what kind of cable uh, you get I mean what kind of adapters at the end of the cable I would say the, the UHF uh, ones are the most common that's the cheapest one as best as I saw at least uh, here in USA so I did go with that and simply use adapters for that then we have the length of the cable how much you uh, need the cable is really important the coax cable you can't use a regular cable it needs to be a shielded coax cable so you don't have any interference and in my setup it goes to the antenna switch right there. In this case, I put it up the opposite way. So with one input and two output for two different radios. But of course you can uh, switch it around if you want to connect multiple antennas, up to three antennas with one uh, radio. The video about uh, that device is on my YouTube channel as well. So we have here the connector. We have switched it over here. So that goes on that part and is simply connected to a Texan with a regular 3.5 mm plug-in. That goes in there. The other side here is to a ATS. 25 radio and that has a bit of different connector so we have the same here but on the end there we have a different connector to go on there so it depends on what radio you're gonna use what kind of adapter you're gonna need of course, there, that is only two possibilities. You can also uh, get uh, something like this and then use a gator clamp, the most simple solution to clamp on because uh, some radios don't have an external uh, plug-in and uh, you simply need to clamp it on the antenna. But of course, if you can uh, use the plug-in, that always gives you a better signal. So that is basically the setup. Uh, one uh, matter I forgot to say is the diameter. That is pretty important. So we have 1.6 meter in the diameter of the whole loop. That means 80 centimeters on the radius from the middle. So it's pretty big. For, uh, what it is that's basically what you get with that five meters or that 23.5 foot as you make a circle out of it and uh, 
That is maybe for some a bit a disadvantage because it's rather big and uh, bulky but there is also a different solution. Some people did comment on the Wanderloop uh, Wanderlins uh, video about the uh, using a uh, electric charging cab cable for the cars. You know the if your battery goes down on a parking lot, you get just connected with a different car uh, from battery to battery. So the people did use such a cable, uh, split it in half. You have a, a red and the black side uh, connected it on top there. The red and the black and the bottom uh, setup was then clamped on the coax cable in the same way like here. And that did work apparently pretty well too. So that would be a relative cheap, easy and compact version because uh, you don't have of course any pipe or anything uh, to deal with. So that is a possibility too, what you can uh, try out and experiment and uh, test it out, how it goes. It's always about testing, building something, testing and testing it again, different weather situation, different radios, different antennas, uh, how the reception is on shortwave and other frequencies. So that much in this video. I hope that was uh, clear and uh, easy enough how I did explain it. I'm gonna make now a video in German. So because in, in uh, Germany that is something uh, that is interesting for many people as well. So that much about the big loop antenna.